Good evening all and welcome. Join me as we venture into some haunted houses for some positively scary stories. So get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I believe that for a number of years, my family home that was built in the 1960s by my grandparents from my father's side have been haunted by several different paranormal entities over the course of decades. Just because of major differences between the happenings themselves. It's a two-story house with my parents and I sleeping on the second floor and my sister and grandparents on the first. For me, however, this began around 15 years ago. My older sister was the first one afflicted. In a short span of time, she began having constant sleep paralysis experiences, which I know aren't scientifically related to anything paranormal, but the folklore of my country relates them to a specific entity known as the Dark Man. You might call it a sleep paralysis demon or shadow person. At first, nothing was thought of it, but these became so frequent, it was starting to weird my parents out as well as myself and my sister. Soon, more things started happening in addition to this, like her waking up in the middle of the night with something invisible pulling on her long hair, causing her to freak out and call out for Grandma who, with lightning speed, ran over with a bottle of holy water, sprayed the place and prayed with my sister. Another time this happened, whatever was playing with her hair appeared to blow in her face, freaking her out even more. The most shocking thing during the beginning of these happenings came when my mother, my sister and I were all in our living room watching TV, when suddenly from a fully awake state, my sister shifted into the state of sleep paralysis. It took a few seconds for my mum and me to realise what was happening, when we noticed her shaking with her eyes open on the sofa, struggling to let sound out. When she finally woke up, she let out a blood-curdling scream, crying and yelling at my mum and myself, saying that it got her and asking why we didn't help. She was visibly shaken and pale. My grandma, of course, arrived with her usual remedy, and even my father, a skeptic, walked out of my parents' bedroom, freaked out by the scream. My grandma remembered that in the local law, if a person wanted to be protected from the dark man, a piece of clothing from the person's father needed to be placed on them, serving as a shield. So we tied my father's belt around her waist, and she went to sleep in my room, as she usually did when things like this happened. Still distraught and frightened, she asked me to get her a glass of water. So I went to get her some in a plastic cup from the water dispenser to hand to her. As my mum was still in the living room, and my bedroom door as well as my parents' bedroom door were open, we all witnessed this next part. As I approached my bedroom, the plastic cup exploded in my hand, splitting on all sides, water bursting out my hand. My mum got up immediately and came over. Everyone was in shock and speechless. My dad first thought that I had dropped the cup, but upon closer inspection, the cup was torn all around in perfectly straight lines, almost as if someone had cut it with a scalpel. Safe to say, not much sleeping had been done that night. Since that night, my mother and I began experiencing sleep paralysis. For her, just a couple of times, and for me, until this very day. Also, nightly noises started appearing in our house, different than the house setting. Chairs moving, clinking dishware, mainly on the second floor, and especially when we weren't home. At one point, my grandma even searched the second floor, suspecting a burglary, as she heard the old wardrobe in my parents' room open, in addition to chairs moving. But when she reached the room, the wardrobe was open and no one was there. These incidents prompted my sister to visit our local priest. After explaining the situation, the happenings, and the nature of the haunting, the priest concluded that a lost spirit was inhabiting our home, and was for some reason reaching out to my sister wanting to become known. My sister was a little relieved after this, knowing that the spirit meant no harm. She even called it Samuel. Well, now it was time to figure out who the hell Samuel actually was. There were a few theories. 
The first one concerned when my grandma was a little girl on her way home from school. She had to pass through a cemetery every day, and one day she saw some pretty flowers on a grave. She picked them and brought them home without telling anyone. That night, she woke up to an invisible force grabbing her by the leg, trying to drag her out of bed. She felt as if she knew whatever was dragging her wanted those flowers back. She woke her parents up, and her mother said the same thing, and they discard or return the flowers the next morning. From that day on, she knew to never take anything from a graveyard again. It could have been that this entity remained attached to her and moved with her from her childhood home to our house when her grandpa built it. Since it was only a couple of houses next door, the second one was that the ghost was probably my grandma's father, my great grandpa, who I'd never met. This was thought because before he died, he said to my grandma, if I am gone and you ever hear something moving in the attic, know it's me. Coincidentally, the attic eventually became the second floor of the house where most of the noises and the cup incident happened. It's also worth noting that my sister and I shared my room before she moved downstairs, so it could be connected somehow. I truly don't know. Other incidents soon followed. My mother once felt a strong press on her upper body when she was nearly sleeping, and thinking Dad put his arm around her with his full weight. She asked him to move the arm, and after she got no response, she asked again. Complaining that it was hard to breathe, she eventually had enough to the point of crying and yelling at him to stop, only to realize he wasn't even turned towards her in the bed. He was turned the other side and woke up wondering why she was screaming to begin with. She still remembers this vividly, and it frightens her to this day. I remember one night I was playing PS2 games quite late and had gone to bed without realizing I forgot to turn it off, and my LED light-up joysticks remained plugged in. I woke up in the middle of the night and the TV was off, but thank God the PS2 was still working and the joysticks were glowing. I couldn't stand the darkness with everything going on. I remember looking at the PS2 and the light, when suddenly the joystick unplugs itself, and in an instant, I was left in total darkness and panic within the room. I wake up and run to the light switch which remained turned on for the entire night. This was soon followed by my dumbass once again late at night watching TV in the living room. The stairs are connected to our second floor at the beginning of the living room and are separated by a thin metal strip from the living room floor. In total darkness, I hear footsteps coming up the stairs. I yell out to my sister, believing she is going upstairs for a drink. As I get no response, I realize that there isn't a chance in hell that my sister would be coming up the stairs without turning the lights on, as she never sleeps with the lights off since this started happening. Up to this very day, at almost 30, but I digress. I sit up on the sofa frozen, listening to each footstep as it comes closer to the top of the stairs. Finally, I hear the metal strip on the top step clanking, as if someone had stepped on it, and I run for the hills, or should I say for my parents' bedroom door, frantically banging on it and screaming for them to let me in. I slept in their room for the rest of the night. The most bizarre thing during that first round of hauntings happened during broad daylight, and it's truly unexplainable in every way. My grandpa, grandma, sister and I were all heading next door to my aunt's house that afternoon, and my grandparents went before us, as I was still doing something in my room and my sister was in the bathroom. It was always practice in our house that the last person to leave takes the keys from inside the front door and locks it up before heading out. So I run out the house telling my sister that I'm going and she replies that she won't be far behind. I close the door behind me and my sister tries to come out of the house maybe half a minute after me. She reaches the door handle and realizes that the house is locked. The goddamn house was locked from the inside after I left, and she remained the only person in there, meaning no one was there to lock it. She unlocked it as fast as she could and ran out telling me that it was impossible someone locked her in. We told everybody, we checked the locks, tried to reproduce it but it was impossible. 
the key had to be turned six times for the door to be locked. That was the last major thing. We just learned to live with it and accept it. As my sister accepted this, Samuel, and truly no more incidents happened for a long time. At first, we didn't spread a word about it outside of family and friends. But when some time passed, I told my classmates, and one of them actually stayed the night after my birthday party. He was so intrigued and wanted to hear the noises for himself. My sister knew this and actually tried to pull a prank on us by knocking at our door late at night after the party. And he and my other friend, who were also sleeping over, got scared crapless. So my sister revealed herself. But the next time it happened, a few hours after, my friend woke me up to say that something was knocking out there again. I opened the door, but this time no one was there. My sister was in her room fast asleep. He kept asking me what the hell that was, and I couldn't give him an answer. I was too afraid to, but I was used to it. He never slept over again, and tells the story a lot. Well, those are the stories. After a few years, it started to get watered down, so I'm glad there was less activity in the end. I'm going to take you back to my college days. My roommates and I moved into this house that hadn't had any tenants in a few years. The first day when I was looking around, I could have sworn I saw someone in the attic but brushed it off. My roommate also mentioned the doorknob turned on its own when he went to grab it, but again, old house, we brushed it off. Things seemed normal for the first few days. The house was noisy, but we blamed it on being old. We did notice the three doors down the hallway always seemed to have a different configuration every time we came back, but four people lived there, and we continued to ignore the little things. The end of the first week, the people living on the attached house to ours called us. They were a bit spooked. They had told us everything on the walls had simultaneously fallen off. We helped them clean up and kind of talked it out. We had decided to stay as it was our first day alone in the apartment, and I was laying in my bed, staring at the closet door, wishing it was closed. For whatever reason, the door being open made me uncomfortable. Suddenly, it slammed shut. I just froze, looked around, and then audibly said, Thanks? I quickly packed up, and then went to my significant other's apartment. Two weeks or so later, I came back. At that point, the energy was pretty bad. Not everyone was getting along and our times coming and going, my significant other complained that it felt like someone was pushing them on the stairs. Apparently several others had had this issue, so we called maintenance. Maintenance comes in and rips up the stairs, stabilizing them, then puts them back down. This changed nothing. But for whatever reason that night, I decided I would stay. That night, I was laying in bed chatting with my roommate when our third roommate walked past. The moment they walked past the mirror on the closet, it bent back and slammed against the closet door. We were all spooked. So I got up and pulled on it trying to figure out what happened. Turns out it was bolted to the door. I get back into bed, incredibly spooked, when the fourth roommate walks past our door. The mirror rattled against the door. I get my things, get up and tell my roommate and their significant others that I'm going to my significant other's apartment. They were both like, you're gonna just leave us here? I responded with, yep, and immediately bailed and never went back. It wasn't soon after when the third and fourth roommate had their sorority over for a meeting when smoke allegedly started pouring out of the light switch. Maintenance came and didn't find anything, but they complained it was a fire hazard so the apartment company moved us into a new apartment, splitting up the group. I still to this day have no idea what was up with that house, but whatever it was, did not like us there. Shortly after we moved in, my wife and I were in bed sleeping during the day, as we both worked third shift, and I hear the sound of a kid saying, Mommy? Mommy? From her side of the bed. I thought it was my stepson and rolled over to see what he wanted. When I rolled over, I saw a shadow from a child on all fours on top of my wife. I blinked to clear my eyes of sleepiness and it was gone. Something you should know about this apartment. 
was that it was a house with two apartments divided between the top and bottom floor. I looked at both floors before choosing the bottom floor because it was bigger and had a basement. A year or so later one night, I'm getting home from work and I look at the house and see a pale face looking out from the attic window. The upstairs apartment did have tenants at the time, but I know for a fact that the landlord had bolted the attic shut because I asked when I looked at the upstairs apartment. There were numerous other smaller incidences, the usual footsteps while no one else is around, seeing shadow people out of the corner of your eye, random feelings of being watched and dread, but things really escalated when my wife got pregnant. Things started happening around her more often. When her belly started to show, she would sometimes wake up with scratches on it. She swears some unseen force straight up knocked her down. But what really forced us to move was after we had our son. He would have random scratches on his body, and after the first time we found them, we made sure he went to bed with mittens on, because baby fingernails are razor blades in their own right. But we also made sure he had been wearing a onesie to protect himself from getting scratched some other way. That was the last straw. We could tolerate attacks on ourselves, but not the baby. We packed up and moved before his first birthday to a home we bought ourselves. This home is also haunted, but not in a malicious way like the last one. But that's a story for another day. As we were leaving, we felt the obligation to warn the new tenants, but didn't want to look crazy. There was a section of wood panelling in the basement that you could pull off the wall to get access to the water main. I figured that any sufficiently curious renter would eventually pull that panel off to see what's behind it. I did. So I left a note there addressed to the next tenants taped to the inside of the panel detailing what went on and warning them of what they may encounter. You may call me an ass for not telling them outright, but I didn't feel like it was right to potentially scare off any would-be renters since our landlord was a good person and treated us well. I was born in 1989, and when I was a bit older, my room was in a big room down on the basement floor. It had that dark floor to ceiling wood paneling covering all the walls, and I remember that I used to find wood lice in the musty corners of the room. I don't really remember everything that happened there because I was so young, but I remember that I would get scared down there pretty often. My mum told me recently that I would talk about things like people coming out the walls, although I don't remember that. One thing I do remember was being down there alone during a big thunderstorm during the summer and peeking out of the windows to see something really weird out in the yard next to the power pole. As dumb as it sounds, what I saw reminds me now of one of those big Moai statue heads. I really didn't get a good look at it. Another time, something I don't really recall scared me so much that I do remember desperately trying to open the door and screaming my head off for my parents. Although, for some reason, I couldn't do it. Most likely I was just so worked up that I accidentally locked the door somehow. But I also remember something very similar kept happening in my other bedroom a year or two later. Real or imaginary, all that stuff scared me to the point that eventually my parents had to ask my sister to switch rooms with me. Her bedroom was upstairs and right next door to where my parents slept. And although it was smaller, it was not as scary and still more than enough space for a little kid, but the weirdness was only starting. The first salient event that I can recall with certainty took place in the spring of 1995. My grandfather had been a smoker since childhood in the 1920s. His favorite were unfiltered camel cigarettes. You could see him with one in nearly every photograph we have of him. As a consequence of this habit, he developed lung cancer in the early 90s and had half of his lung removed to try and halt the progress of the disease. It didn't work. The cancer spread to his liver and eventually his brain and he died right around Easter of 1995. I still remember how devastated I was when my parents told me what happened 
as we had been especially close to one another, and I think I might have been his favourite grandson. It was hard for us all, and my maternal grandmother came to live with us for a short while after that. One night during that time, my mother had just gone to bed, when she heard the sound of someone crying in the house. Thinking that it was her mum or one of the children, she got out of bed and went to check on everyone. Strangely, everyone was fast asleep in the house. My mother recalls my grandmother was even snoring loudly, and so she just thought that maybe she'd been hearing things. No sooner had she gone back to bed when it started up again, but that wasn't the end of things. The day of the viewing came, and I still remember playing the infamous Vesta quest for the Ness before that, and getting to lay inside of a funeral coffin down at the funeral parlour. A few days later they held the funeral, but my parents thought that it would upset me if I went, so I stayed home with a babysitter and enjoyed all the food after. I can still remember playing a game where the babysitter would take turns in hiding in the closet in my room, which was separated from the rest of the bedroom by a wooden sliding door on metal tracks. Things kind of went back to their normal routine after that. One weekend, about a week or two later, my father and brother were working out of town and my sister had gone to spend the night at a friend's house. That meant that my mother and I were home alone at the time, which wasn't really a big deal. We live out in the country, and really nothing happens here in terms of crime for the most part. A quiet evening passed by, and mother tucked me in for the night and went to bed herself. Not long after that, I began to hear a noise from my closet, the sound of deep, laboured breathing. It was intensely loud, and reminded me of someone who was either very sick, or had been messed up in an accident or something. I have always thought that I left the room and hurried over to tell my mother about it, but she claims that I yelled for her to come and help instead. Regardless of what happened, she came into my room and heard the breathing with her own ears. With no one else around, she declined to investigate further and instead hurried me to her room where we would be safe for the night. Naturally enough, we thought it was perhaps my grandfather had returned for one final look at his grandson before departing, although there really was no way of knowing exactly what happened. It was no dream for sure, and I have always been a little wary of closets ever since that time. A few years later that house caught fire and burnt down on one chilly October night, and I remember one of our relatives telling us that spirits can't follow you from house to house after the old one burnt down. We rebuilt on the same location, and for a few years nothing paranormal happened. Later, in my preteen years, I started hanging out with kids that were into WWF and then WWE. That was a huge time for professional wrestling. After a slump in the business in the early 90s, the Attitude Era was in full swing and there was nothing more exciting for a 10 year old boy to watch on cable television. I would stay up for Raw is War on the tiny TV my parents bought me for my birthday and would then go to sleep. One night in either 1999 or 2000, I had just finished watching wrestling for the night and I just pressed the power button on my remote control when something unbelievable happened. As the light of the television flicked off, I saw the dark form of a human being standing right beside my bed. It was rather thin and short by adult standards and might have been about five feet in height at most. In a panic, I mashed the power button on my remote to turn the TV back on to see what it was. Although it took a few seconds to switch on, it felt like an eternity. When it finally did, there was no one there. Something else unusual happened around that time. Back then, we didn't have as many channels as we would later, and I think they would have only gone up to around 60 or 70 at the most. My TV could get twice that many, but the rest was static, which took forever to slowly flip through to get back to channel 2, if you were too lazy to punch in the number on the remote. I don't know why, but as I browsed through channel after channel of snow, I said to myself, you know what, screw this, and turned my TV off to go do something else. As the screen began to blink off, as I pressed the power button, I saw something that frightened me deeply. In the static, I saw the perfect head, neck, and shoulders of a human being. 
It looked like the opening part of Plan 9 from Outer Space, where you can see Chriswell sitting in the background in the darkness, and I was pretty freaked out by this. I turned the TV back on quickly, and then off again, to see if the image would return, but no matter how many times I did so, it never did. You might say it was just a coincidence, or my eyes playing tricks on me, but after the other incident, I wasn't so sure. Nothing much happened until 2007, when my maternal grandmother moved into our finished basement slash family room in a sort of hospice situation. She had a bad heart and a pacemaker, and had been in the hospital many times before, and due to various problems related to her worsening cardiac issues. My mother and I spent the most time taking care of her, and one January day, she died on the couch which we still have down there. It was sad because of how close we were, and due to the fact that I was the one who was home when she finally died. And although I felt and still feel really guilty about it, there really wasn't that much anyone could have done anyway. I'd like to mention that for most of my teenage years and 20s, I didn't think nor care about ghosts and developed a hard-nosed materialist mindset for the most part. Fast forward to 2015. I was pretty much a neat loser at that point, living in the rebuilt version of my childhood bedroom and had been up all night reading about Warhammer 40k and browsing 4chan. At around 4 or 5 in the morning, my mother had gotten up to begin her morning routine before going into work, and I went to say hello to her and see what was going on. It was a glorious pre-dawn autumn morning, with a warm breeze carrying the sweetness of the fallen leaves along with everyday draught. I had a few wine-flavoured cigarrillos with wooden tips left over, and decided I would take my dogs to pee while I smoked one and enjoyed the morning air. I left my computer running and the desk lamp on and headed out. My mother had already busied herself in the upstairs bathroom for her long hair and makeup ritual, and my father and brother were still asleep. Making my way outside with our two dogs, I stood beneath the big plum tree in our front yard and lit up my cigar while they ran to do their thing. The sky was amazingly clear, and a huge patch of stars around the zodiac belt gleamed above me in the darkness. It was as perfect as you could ask for, except for one thing. I suddenly noticed the silhouette of a human being standing at the double-hung windows on the eastern end of my room. The Venetian blinds were down, and whoever was up there was perfectly backlit by the desk lamp on the other end of the room. It made me think of Sherlock Holmes, in the story where he puts a dummy by his window to trick an assassin into shooting at it, and without really thinking, I assumed my mother had gone into my room for something. The silhouette of a human figure was plain as day, standing motionless at the blinds for a few moments as I watched it. I then felt like whoever was up there was watching me, although it didn't really click until later how dumb that would be. I took my eyes off it for a moment in order to check on the dogs, and when I looked back up, it had vanished. Thinking that nothing was amiss, I finished my smoke and corralled the pups back inside the house. But to my surprise, my mother was still in the bathroom, getting around with the door shut, and no one else was awake. My room was quite empty, and when I knocked on the bathroom door to inquire whether or not she had just been in my bedroom, her annoyed manner upon being interrupted immediately told me that I was asking a stupid question, even before she could answer in the negative. The more I thought about it, the weirder the whole thing seemed. Whoever had been in there had been standing so close to the blinds that their nose must have nearly been touching them, and they had not bothered to part the blinds to peek through them like a normal human would have. I guess you can say that they also could have just been standing with their back to the window, but that would have still been weird. So who was it? Skip ahead to 2019. I don't think I need to tell anyone hearing this how chaotic things were that year. So much fear and anxiety and tumult. On top of it all, all the stuff, strange events and such were taking place at my house. Nothing major at first, 
the door to our laundry room down in the basement slamming shut on its own, which never happens even during the great storms of springs and summer, and the upstairs doors will if they are open, and reports of unknown voices in the house. My mother was the first to mention that she had thought she heard a man's voice saying her name from down in the basement or in other parts of the house, although I myself never heard them at that point. After all, that had happened to me, and I was willing to believe her and give her the benefit of the doubt, but I think everyone just kind of wrote them off as being strange and unconnected events. Nothing happened to me directly until the memorable day of the 27th of November 2019. The day after Thanksgiving was on a Friday, and at the time, I was working at our family's construction business. I had eaten well the day before and gotten a lot of sleep and was feeling pretty good even though I think we were working all weekend to catch up on our schedule. By a little before 8am, I was ready to head to work with my father and brother as I usually was, but by an odd turn of events we were delayed that day by the failure of our water system. Our house is out in the country and draws all its water from a well, and that whole arrangement can be pretty finicky when it decides that it wants to act up. That day, my mother had been taking a shower when the well pump chose to kick off, and so she was left there standing in the bathtub covered with soap while we scrambled to heat up water for her to rinse off. There really wasn't much for me to do, so I settled down on the couch to watch TV while I waited for them to finish up. A bit later, my brother came in and joined me, and after a few minutes, his dog started to groan and make a fuss like he does when he wants to go outside. My brother stood up to go over and take him out. His movements caused my eyes to pan to the left. Just as they did so, I saw the most unnatural sight indeed. Out in the kitchen, right near the ceiling, some kind of silver orb, like the golden snitch from Harry Potter. It was floating near the skylight towards our staircase. I only saw it for about a second. I swore it was metallic in colour at first, then kind of changed a bit to the sort of blended pinks and silvers you see in the sky when the sun's coming up. Like it was kind of bright or lit up inside. I can't really explain it because I've never seen anything like it for the rest of my life. To make things stranger, it changed forms. Our house has pretty high ceilings on the first floor, so I would say it was flying about seven or eight feet up at that point. Suddenly, without landing or flying downwards at all, it instantly transformed into a big dark shape on the floor, and it was about four to four and a half feet in height, and was somewhat of a pointed cylinder slash pyramid shape, rather than bipedal or quadruped. The best thing I can compare the shape to is an actual reference of tentacles from the game Maniac Mansion. Although it did not have suckers on it or any features at all, it was just a deep and shiny black, like some kind of rubber, like when you put a whole bunch of plastic on fire and burn it up. It was solid too, because I could see the light from the big window behind reflecting in it. When it changed forms, it didn't stop moving or lose momentum at all, and propelled itself smoothly forwards and then to the right down of the basement steps just like a train on a set of tracks. I was so shocked with what I saw that I sprang out from the couch and yelled out, sort of loping after it. I followed right behind it down to the basement thinking I was about to confront a very strange intruder, but it was all calm and peaceful down there. Nobody else saw it or noticed anything at all, but I was in psychological shock from what had just happened. As we went out to the truck to go to work, my whole body was numb, and I was nearly vibrating with fear. I couldn't think of anything else but of what had just happened, like I had survived a plane crash, and I chatted mindlessly about the shape of the flying silver orb, and was just in tatters for the rest of the day. When I got home that night, I couldn't sleep well for days, out of fear of whatever it was may be coming back again and shows up in my room. It was a good while before I could even begin to consider sleeping without all of the lights blazing, and I started to pray to God and Jesus Christ to protect me from whatever that thing had been. Combined with everything else that happened, everyone else except my dad was getting pretty freaked out, 
and things didn't stop there either. I didn't start writing everything down until that summer, but there was weird stuff going on that we actually contracted paranormal investigators from our state. The first outfit that we emailed was run by a former state trooper who I found out later had been on the travel channel before talking about paranormal subjects. Really nice dude, very patient and someone who contracted them out of the blue with a wild story. His group is from a town about an hour and a half away, so he kindly puts us in touch with a local group of investigators who were much closer. They were also really nice and extremely patient as we explained our story to them. Although in the end, because COVID was going on, nothing really came of it. They definitely believed us though, and suggested that it could either be something related to my grandmother's death in the basement room, or something to do with the negative energy surrounding the former occupant of the house. Although there was no definitive proof of what was happening, it was a huge relief to have someone try help us at all. Weird stuff continued to happen after that. One day I was standing in the dining room, speaking with my mother. I watched as a three by three inch basket that was filled with decorative gourds and pumpkins lifted one end of itself off the buffet table that it was sitting on and slammed back down. None of our cats or dogs were near it at the time and my mum and I were alone in the house. My brother and I tried a few experiments later to see if we could replicate the phenomena, but no matter what we did, we couldn't get it to happen again. Just little weird events that would seem to happen more and more, to the point where I started to write them down. One thing that all of us, except for my father, heard were the voices. My mother heard them the most, but I also did later on. Usually she would be in the laundry room, which is in the basement, or in the kitchen when she would hear them. Usually it would be a man's voice calling her name out loud in English at a normal volume, but one day she heard a man shouting from our basement in something that sounded like German. My brother also heard these voices, although for him, it would be in the early morning hours when he was sleeping in bed. Sometimes it would just sort of say his name in a loud whisper, but one day he also heard the voice saying my parents' names, like it was trying to beckon them out of their bedroom. I also heard voices wake me up when I was sleeping, although to me they sounded female at first. A couple of times when I was home alone, I woke up to a woman calling my name and would say, what? Thinking that it was my mother. Invariably, there would be no one when I would check outside my room. One day I awoke to a harsh voice telling me to get up, like it was mad at me for sleeping in. Although I don't know if it was a man or woman at the time. Probably the weirdest time of all was when I heard it while I was awake in my bedroom at night. It was probably around eight or nine, not really that late and I believe that I was just messing around on the computer at that time, when all of a sudden, I heard a man's voice call my name very clearly from the wall to my right, although there was nothing there but my bed and some stuffed animals that were sitting on it. What really shook me up was aside from not wondering if I was going crazy, is if all the other stuff hadn't have happened, I probably would have just thought I was nuts. Another weird thing that we experienced was what I call the phantom dog, we live out in the country and don't really have any other houses near us. So aside from our own dogs, it's really rare to hear or see any others. Neither of our closest neighbors had dogs during this period either. My brother heard this more than any of us because he spends most of the time downstairs. It sounded like a dog barking, but not like it would if it were actually inside. Instead, picture yourself in a gigantic tunnel, with you at one end and the dog on the other. By the time that the sound gets to you, it's kind of echoey and muffled, and that is exactly what this was like. Then I heard it. I could swear that it sounded like it was coming right out of the empty space in the walls above my front door. My brother and mother described hearing something that sounded like the same thing, and I believed them. My brother also has his own ghost sighting, Although I don't know what date this happened, it was definitely in the late spring or summer. As I was outside in an Andrian Dak chair in the yard reading while he was inside. It was just a normal day until he came out hurrying out the house and beelined straight to me. I could tell right away that something was wrong by the pallor of his face. He was as pale as a sheet of paper 
and I was preparing myself for terrible news, like my parents had been in an accident or something. Instead, he told me he'd been downstairs in his bedroom with the door open, and he'd seen an adult man walk across the doorway and disappear into the family room. The place where the man had come from was a solid wall, with an old gun cabinet in front of it, and it's absolutely impossible for him to have come from anywhere else down there. When I asked him about it, my brother described the man as wearing some kind of dark old-fashioned coat with buttons on the sleeve. If you had seen his face, how flabbergasted he was by all of this, you would have believed him too. On the 30th of July, 2021, my parents were getting ready to go to see the Guns N' Roses concert in Hersey, Pennsylvania. There are four of us that live here. My dad had gone into town to run errands. My mother was packing a suitcase in her second floor bedroom. My brother was down in his room on the basement level and I was taking a shower in the second floor bathroom. Now our kitchen on the first floor and our bathroom on the second floor share a wall even though they are on different stories. The shower above and the oven and storage cupboards below both sit on opposite sides of a concrete divider. So if someone is frying bacon on the stove, you can smell it perfectly well in the bathroom. I was just showering normally when I heard what I thought was someone rooting through the storage cupboards down in the kitchen. The ones on either side of the oven are stuffed to the brim with pots, pans and baking sheets. So if you're digging through them, you're going to make quite a racket. Sometimes when you're looking for a colander or a special pan, you might have to hunt for a bit. So at first, I thought it was just my mum searching for something and didn't pay attention to it. What made me suspicious was the sound actually became louder, like someone was really digging through the cupboards, with some intensity. I thought that someone was ripping the kitchen apart at first, but after a moment, the discordant babble of sound was replaced by one of metallic repetition. All I could think of then, and now, was that someone had taken our heavy purple Rachel Ray Dutch oven and was smashing it repeatedly against the wall with considerable force. It sounded like a monk tolling the hours on a big bell. At first I was unconcerned, then I was annoyed, then I was quite curious. What was sounding? After a while it stopped, and I finished my shower in peace. After I dried off and put clothes back on, I was quite surprised to see that my mother was still in her room, packing upon my exit. She asked me right away if I had called her name, to which I replied, no. I asked if she'd just been in the kitchen doing something, and she told me that she had been in her bedroom the entire time. As I went downstairs to see what was going on, I saw my brother coming in the front door. He had gone outside to smoke a cigarette, and when I asked him if he had called my mum's name, he said he hadn't. When he'd been downstairs in his bedroom and getting ready to come up for a smoke, he said he heard someone making a racket in the kitchen. When he came upstairs to go out, there had been no one around, so he assumed that my mother must have been looking for something and then left before he got there. It is 100% impossible to go from the basement to the front door to our house without getting a very clear view of the entire kitchen, and combined with the fact that no one else was around, made it a very strange incident indeed. Nothing in the kitchen had been disturbed, nor was out of place. The next story happened on the 2nd of August, 2021. It really shook me up. That night, I went to bed after everyone else in the house had fallen asleep. And no sooner had I settled into bed and started to relax, that I heard the familiar sounds of someone knocking on my wall. Now my parents' bedroom is right next door to mine, and sometimes when my parents are in bed, they will knock on the wall to get my attention. I've heard them do this enough that when I first heard the knocking, I said, what, out loud to see what they wanted, only to be greeted with silence. Suddenly I realized that the knock had not come from the wall that led to my parents' room, but instead had come from the unoccupied supply room on the northern face of my bedroom. I was instantly awoken. I knew that sound and was up staring into the darkness. What made things even crazier was the sound had not come from the middle section of the wall where a normal person would knock. 
but instead, on the wall like they were standing on tiptoes to reach up to that height. The next thing that happened was on the 10th of December. I was standing at the foot of the staircase that leads to our second floor when I heard the clear and distinct noise of someone walking down the steps in my direction. It wasn't just the stairs creaking from a change in humidity or something like that either. It was the unmistakable sound of an adult descending our wooden stairs. I was staring right at them, and there was no one on them. I was actually lucid enough to remember that people say they often feel a cold chill if a ghost comes near them, so I blocked the way with my body in anticipation of reaching the bottom. I actually feel proud to say that I did it, and that I wasn't scared at all. My mum definitely wins the prize for weirdest experience, however, as on another night, my mother woke up very late at night to go to the bathroom. None of the lights in the house were on except for a nightlight in the bathroom ceiling, and she went in and did her business and headed back to bed. When she opened the door to leave the bathroom, however, a most unusual sight greeted her. The shadowy half-figure of a man standing in the hall. He had long, thin legs that gave her the impression that he was tall, and had what she described as dark, old-fashioned dress clothes. He wore dark shoes and high-waisted pants that she said were definitely not from our time. And oddest of all, his body just sort of disappeared not far above the waist. The man was standing right in front of the dog bed in the hall with his feet pointing at the door while our old Labrador retriever was sleeping peacefully. And the man vanished as soon as he saw it. I was actually awake at the time and playing Team Fortress 2 in my bedroom. And I remember hearing my mother get up and go over to the bathroom right when it happened. Within a few minutes, my game of Dust Bowl finished, and I went out to get a drink and use the John myself. As I did so, though, I heard my mum calling my name with some urgency from the inside of her bedroom. I went to see what she wanted, and she repeated to me in the most astonished tone exactly what I just said. If my game had finished earlier, maybe I would have been the one to see him. She confessed that she actually hadn't been afraid at all during the encounter, and she also mentioned that earlier in the night she had been sitting downstairs with a cat on her lap that kept staring towards the upstairs hallway as if there was something there. But that wasn't her last encounter with the strange man. Later, my mother once again rose to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. This time, two of our cats were in there with her, and she spent a little time talking with them before opening the door and stepping out into the hall. What she didn't realize was that the ghostly man was standing right outside the door. In fact, she stepped right into him. It didn't harm her or feel like she'd passed through any kind of material, but it was as if you were walking into a patch of empty normal air. This time, she actually saw the upper half of him and got a good look. He was tall, about six foot one, and skinny with a beard, at least a few inches in length and a moustache. He was well dressed. He wore a long jacket that made her think of a morning jacket, a white or cream coloured dress shirt, and a dark vest that made the shape of a U with no hat. I showed her a chart of 19th century men's fashion the next day that you can find on Pinterest, and she indicated that it reminded her most of clothes that were around the middle part of that century. We had wondered before if maybe he had been a ghost that followed us home from a battlefield or something that we had visited, but she said that he was in too good of a shape to have been the casualty of a war. A few nights later, it was just about dawn, and my mother was lightly dozing in bed in a state somewhere between wakefulness, when she heard something unusual. She described it to me as the sound of someone whispering or talking quietly down a tunnel or from a distance, and it was said to have told her November 7th, followed by 19th. She thought, obviously enough, that the voice was trying to tell her a date of great importance, but was even not told or unable to hear the final two digits of the date. Just on a hunch, I checked back through our family history to see if any of our relatives had died on that date, but nobody I could found matched it. Things cooled down for a long time after that, but believe it or not, just recently, there have been some major flare-ups in activity.
My brother was down in his room watching a video at around one in the morning when he saw the figure of a man gliding down the stairs. He was about average height and build, although all that could be seen of him was a silhouette. It was impossible to see any specific details. But from the outline, my brother was certain that he was wearing a coat that came down to his waist and black pants. He did not wear a hat and did not appear to have long hair or a shaved head. No beard, skin colour or other fine details were discernible. It came down the stairs and turned left, as if it were heading towards the region where the couch was sitting and disappeared. The next day, my mother and father had both gone to bed. My parents had been out shopping and after a long day my father was tired and fell asleep right away. The same could not be said of my mother, who often has trouble sleeping and was wide awake for most of the night. At some point, long after going to bed, my mother suddenly heard a male voice that she had never heard before in her life loudly call her name from the hallway outside of her bedroom door. She said that she was quite awake when this happened and described the voice as belonging to an adult man in his 30s or 40s. Despite the oddity of the situation, she claimed that she wasn't frightened at all by what happened. My mother was sitting at the kitchen table using her laptop when she thought she noticed my female Labrador next to me. She didn't see the dog walk up, but noticed a big cream-colored blob beside her and assumed that it was her. When she reached down to pet it, however, she realized there was actually nothing there at all and that our dog was asleep on the couch in the living room. Those are the stories that I have experienced so far. But I also want to add that the historical society helped me look into the history of the house and compared to the pedigree of other supposedly haunted locations, there would really be nothing here on the whole to provoke or interest an aspiring ghost hunter. The countryside road I live on has never been featured in the curious annals of parochial history as far as we've been able to determine, and there were no structures here until the 50s or 60s, according to all of the extant insurance maps of the area. If you don't know what those are, they are precise maps drawn up by insurance companies that are a goldmine of information for historians, showing the exact location of private residences, businesses and industries in their area of coverage. But as far as we could determine, the piece of land that our house now occupies has had no other structures on it until the 20th century. Before that, it was just part of a larger parcel of land belonging to a farm that eventually was sliced up and sold off. The soil here is pretty poor stuff, heavy mountain clay, and it's so sloped that I doubt it would have been used for much more than growing trees, although I guess you never know. Whenever the house was built here, it eventually became occupied by some pretty shady characters. I'm not really sure what crimes they committed, but it was financial in nature and evidently on a decent scale. They never found the money either. Believe it or not, my parents were told that the FBI came here searching all over the place for cash. The husband went to prison for his part in it, but the wife stayed out of trouble somehow and lived here until the bank took back the place. The house was pretty beat up to that point due to neglect, and my parents were able to buy it from them as a fixer-upper. Hey guys, it's Mort here. Thank you so much for listening to tonight's spooks. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, you can show your gratitude by subscribing or showing, uh, leaving a comment, I should say. Thank you all. Um, I would like to give also a huge thank you to my members and patrons whose names can be seen on screen. Huge thanks, guys. It really means the world. And if you're relatively new here and would like to watch even more scary stories, we just had a fantastic week last week with loads of nature-themed stories which you'll probably enjoy. You can find the links on screen now. But until next time, stay awesome. I'll see you in the next one.